Hi, my name is Erin. I'm a co-founder of Pomoja, and we're here with Katie Rodriguez-Wimberly. Katie, if you wouldn't mind uh, introducing yourself, please. Yeah, hi. Um, so I'm Katie. I am a second-year graduate student at the University of California, Irvine, um, and my concentration is in astrophysics, specifically galaxy evolution, but I'm sure we'll talk about that more. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds really interesting, <laughs> and I hope we do get to talk about that more. Now, um, Katie, if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about your background, um, what got you interested in a STEM field, or particularly what you're working on now, um, kind of your educational and personal background and what you're doing now professionally. Yeah, um, so I think from the get-go, I was kind of interested in, like, space in general. Um, when I was, I have five older sisters, so I have this <laughs> giant family, <laughs> yeah. And they're actually all um, at least 18 years older than me, so, like, there's a big gap between me and my youngest sister. Um, but anyways, growing up, they loved like Star Trek and all things sci-fi. And so that's like what I grew up with. And I loved it also. Um, but kind of just my family, like the culture I grew up in, no one ever thought of STEM as an actual job. Like this was just something that we watched on TV that was entertaining, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and in high school and all throughout grade school, like I was good at science and math, but, um, I just never paid a lot of attention to academics in general. Um, and then in my first calculus class ever, they so he uh, the per, the teacher taught us how to derive things, and I'm sure it was something really easy that we were deriving. <laughs> but that, <laughs> yeah, um, but that like first kind of you don't have to memorize stuff; you can like find the answer yourself. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing! Like. Because, you know, something that I really liked, but I didn't like having to just memorize, like, the times tables or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so learning how to, like, solve things myself was really exciting. Um, and I actually went home, like, probably that week and told my dad, like, I'm going to be a math major in college. This is what I'm going to do. And my dad, being very old school, he was like, what are you going to do with math degree? Like, uh, I don't know. What do you, <laughs> can I just go to school? Like, why do I have to do something with it? <laughs> Very, again, not like minded towards the future. Um, I just wanted to do stuff. So, but I, I realized like I didn't know what I would do with it. And if I have to go to college to like get a job, then I went into the other thing that I really liked right after high school, which was acting. And, and specifically, I wanted to be a sci-fi actress. Um, yeah, so just like the total opposite, not right. Really, but yeah, kind of like just the opposite end of things. Um, and I did that for like five years after high school. I, I studied theater, um, right after high school because I came, come from a lower socioeconomic background. Um, I had to support myself financially as soon as I was out of high school. So I joined the army reserves. Both of my parents were in the military, um, and I had been playing the saxophone since I was, like, 12, so it had been, like, six years that I had been playing hardcore all the time, um, so I joined the Army Reserve Band, actually. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, 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 there's not many uh, military musicians in the world. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, and it, it was really fun, like, I being in the reserves, I got to do one week in a month. And then the rest of the time I was doing theater classes. So everything was like, you know, happy and easy. And, um, it was fun, but I wasn't challenged, you know, I mean, and, and not that acting is easy, but for me, it wasn't, it wasn't the kind of challenge that I wanted. Mm -hmm. So yeah, by the time I was, like 23, 24, when a lot of my friends were graduating college and getting their first job, um, I realized that acting wasn't what I wanted to do every single day. Uh, so I kind of like, I finished my, my associate's degree and I wanted to go to school because I've, I like learning. I just didn't, you know, I wasn't focused in, in high school. Um, 
so I it kind of like reflected on everything that I liked. And, and at the time, my boyfriend was also like a big, you know, nerd culture, love Star Trek, all this kind of stuff. And we talked about, uh, we were watching Star Trek Voyager, actually. And, uh, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I just want to be Captain Janeway. She's so awesome. Um, and he was telling me like, you, that's a job, you know, research is a thing, right? I'm like, what are you talking about? That's not, yeah. Like, no, who does that? Like, what do you do? Um, like people so, do that in real life. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah I'm like, what? Um, and so I start like looking, you know, re- just internet internet's amazing uh googling things and I realized that it is a job and it's like you know this really awesome job where you just get to do science every day um so I that's what I went back to school for so I got my bachelor's at um Cal State Long Beach in physics um because most programs don't have like just astronomy majors. You kind of do physics and astronomy together often. Um, and Cal State Long Beach was close. My sisters had gone there. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. I'll, you know, I'll just do this thing. Um, and it was, it was the rough. <laughs> it, going from like theater where I'm just kind of, you know, memorizing stuff and having fun. Right. To, yeah. Math every single day. Like it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. <laughs> it sounds scary to me, but <laughs> I was never really mathematically inclined or awesome at it. It was always a challenge for me. So, um, but I yeah. always find that people people like you who math and science um, come easy to them and they're passionate about it and they really enjoy it. I I'm not like that. I'm much more inclined on the like artistic, uh, okay. awesome, and English. But I, I find people are weighted on one or the other, typically. Yeah, um, yeah. You kind of run the whole spectrum, though, it sounds like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so I, my husband is actually he's very, very artistic. He's an artist. He's an mm-hmm. animator. Um, and it's funny because we'll sit and talk about, like, the ways that we're creative and I, and he can just make stuff up out of like nothing. Like that's amazing. Like I can't do that at all, but I can kind of do it with math now. I'm like, Oh, we'll just do this thing. I can solve that problem. So yeah, there's definitely a balance, but it's this funny, like there's, there's a lot of creativity in math. Once you like get past memorizing timetables and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, and it, it ends up, I'm I'm such a nerd because I think this is really fun, but I do. I think it's really fun where I'm like, oh, I know how to solve this problem. Hold on. And, you know, like I'll go find all the different little tricks to solve a specific thing. Wow. You you make it sound a lot more interesting than it was for me when I was in school and just wanted to just run away from calculus (laughs) and geometry. (laughs) Yeah. It always came really hard for me. I mean, I pushed through. Nice. And yes. I was an English major in college, so I didn't have to take much uh, math, which uh, I might have planned it that way. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so when you got into school, did you know, you knew you were interested in astronomy, mm-hmm. but you really know then, here's the trajectory I want to take, or, like, here's what I'm working toward. Or you just say, like, I'm, I'm really interested in this stuff and I want to know more. That's, yeah, that's basically what I did. Like, I knew I wanted to do astronomy, um, but I went into the physics program because of the research I had done. Like, getting a physics degree is an amazing um, background for astronomy since they're so closely related. So I, I, I did that and I was like, I don't, I mean, no one in my family has a doctorate. So, um, doing this was, was kind of like, well, it would be awesome to go to grad school, but I have no idea. (laughs) I'm not going to (laughs) commit right away. I'm just going to go and see. Um, but my professors were so awesome. And even in my very first physics class, the first quarter I was at Cal State Long Beach, um, the professor stood up and it was just like one of these kind of 100 level classes. So there was about 150 of us in the class. And he said, look, all of you, I like, if you want to do research um, over the winter quarter, 
come talk to me and you, I'll, I will, I will vouch for you. You can do it. Um, and so I, I did like, I, I don't think I'd ever talked to him before because I'm very like quiet in class. Um, and so I, I asked if I could and he said, yeah. And then literally like two or three weeks later, I was doing research with like the department chair. It was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was That's not intimidating at all. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, I was like, okay, <laughs> this will be fun. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So do you think, did he kind of act as like a mentor for you to kind of nail down, I guess, what you wanted to do, um, or at least help guide you a little bit? Yeah. You know, research and then maybe learning from there more of what's out there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so so when I was talking to him you know and I, I talked to him about like how I was interested in astronomy but that I did want to explore other areas of physics because I really had you know this is my first time taking a physics class ever um or I had taken one before but it, it was it was a different kind of this was like a first major class I guess mm -hmm. um, so he was helpful and like, okay, yeah, let's, we'll set you up with the, the, so the department chair was doing kind of medical research, um, uh, medical physics. So I was helping to create an app for, um, people who are learning how to, people who are hard of hearing and learning how to speak kind of like in public. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a good, he was like, this is good. It's hands on. It's short. You can get a, kind of a taste of what's going on. Um, and then, and then figure out from there, you know, if you want to follow that path or not. Um, but he was really helpful and the department chair was, um, she's an amazing woman. I still talk to her very frequently. Yeah. Um, and just, just guiding me and like, I kind of want to do this, but I don't know. And, and she's like, no, you, then you can do it. Let's just go do it. You know? Um, so they, uh, Cal State Long Beach, all of the professors were just really helpful and like kind of guiding me and saying like, if you want to do it, just try it, just do it. Yeah. That's, that's really good advice. I think some people get really intimidated or think like, I don't know anyone or, you know, like you said, you have a big family and that STEM fields weren't really something at least that your parents were really cool about it for yeah 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 um, but to have someone say like just try it just learn about it um I think that's really important especially for women in STEM that mm -hmm. I still feel like they are always encouraged to yeah. pursue things yeah and to have a, a mentor or just someone kind of on your team saying just do it just find out you know learn about it like yeah. you said the internet's a great resource too <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um have you found did you actually get a lot of support from your family once they figured out okay this is her passion this is what she wants to do because it sounds like they're kind of on the fence at first because maybe it wasn't totally practical to them yeah um kind of so one of my sisters who actually became a designer, which she was in the same situation where the family was like, what, you're going to do what? <laughs> like, why don't you just go do this thing? Um, but she, you know, powered through and, and is, is successful, like owns her own business. And um, yeah, really awesome stuff. So she had always, she became my like champion of like, no, you can do this and just figure it out. Um, and the rest of my family, they were supportive, but they didn't know, they didn't really know what was going on. Like in some sense, I feel like my, my mom, my parents don't even know now that like, I'm not paying for grad school. Like this is my job. <laughs> I don't think they fully grasped that, you know, what is going on is what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. but they were happy that I was going back to school. They were happy that, you know, I, they, at first I was working full time while I was in school. Um, and that was, that's rough. Um, yeah. Uh, but I applied for, again, through encouragement from the faculty at Long Beach, 
um, I applied for a couple fellowships and I got them. So when my family realized like, oh, you're getting money to do this, this thing, they were really happy. They were like supportive, but very happy that like I was figuring out how to do what I wanted to do. Right. Yeah. How do you explain to people what you're researching or what you're working on? Because I think sometimes there's a lot of um, scientific jargon. (laughs) (laughs) Read the words but not maybe necessarily understand what they mean or um, how they might relate to us everyday people. What, what, how do you explain what you do? Yes. So how I, how I explain what I do. Well, so in astro, at least the astrophysics that I work on, like I was saying, it's galaxy evolution. Um, And I, At some point I realized that maybe most people don't even realize like that galaxies evolve and evolution is a weird way to talk about it anyways. Cause I think when most people think about evolution, they think of like how, you know, life came from bacteria. Um, Mm -hmm. And in galaxy evolution, we're really just talking about how the big bang, which was like, you know, a bunch of little stuff that we don't really know what it was. (laughs) Became the galaxies that we see today. Um, my particular role, at least currently, is I look at how long it takes galaxies to stop forming stars. Oh, how interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so galaxies, most of them have like just gas and dust and exactly what stars form out of. Um, so for most of their life, of a, like a galactic life, they just go along forming stars, but through different types of interactions with other galaxies, they lose their gas and dust or maybe use it all up and don't acquire more. And so the star formation ends um, and we see this kind of growing collection of galaxies that are just kind of sitting there because they're not forming any more stars, you know, so once the stars evolve and and die some of them go supernova you know those kind of popular more popular things mm-hmm. um the galaxy dies completely like it just and it can get ripped to shreds through other interactions with galaxies um so what i do is really focus in on how long it takes because once we know how long it takes it's kind of like forensics once we know how long it takes galaxies to stop forming stars we can maybe talk about what um, mechanisms made them stop forming stars? Like, did it pass through this like hot halo of gas and get all of its all of its like fuel stripped away, or did it just kind of enter this area where it couldn't collect any more dust, so it used up what it had and now it's just kind of hanging out? Wow, yeah. I like the way you explained it because I can imagine it in my head just. I, I, well, that sounds really strange. I can imagine a galaxy in my head. But, <laughs> I know you mean. <laughs> they seem to almost have like a lifespan of creation and then they stop for whatever reason. Yeah. Like, trying to find out. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for explaining it that way. Yeah, you're welcome. Yay. <laughs> I get it. I think. <laughs> now, what do you say? Well, do you have people in your life who inspire you or maybe people you look up to? And then how do you think you might inspire others? Yeah, um, I do. I do. So coming from like a not really academic or not really STEM focused family, um, some of my closest like uh, inspirations or like role models aren't in STEM, which is, is kind of odd in a sense because I can't look to them for like, career steps as much as I can for like inspiration to keep going and figuring it out on my own. So uh, my sister, which I briefly mentioned just her, like, you know, she's figured she started a company too. So she's kind of figuring it all out on her own, which inspires me to keep going. Mm -hmm. Um, And my husband as well. um, He works really hard and does kind of, he, has his like main job and then a bunch of small like art uh side art jobs um 
and doing those, I'm like, oh, so I, I can, I can have grad school and then do like outreach and, um, like have a social media presence and do these kind of things. So it's inspired me not to just like sit at my desk and stare at my computer, you know, coding. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Yeah. And then inside of, um, STEM or astronomy, I think a lot of my professors now at, uh, at UC Irvine are really inspiring because a lot of them do the same thing where they, you know, they focus on science and it's every day they're really pushing hard to um, do good science and publish that science and focus on communicating it and helping um, increase diversity in, you know, STEM as a whole, but particularly for us, astrophysics. Um, So I kind of, um, I'm inspired by them to do the same and just kind of, so I do outreach by like going into classrooms. Um, particularly I focus on classrooms with, um, kids that either have autism or down syndrome. Two of my older sisters, um, are teachers in these types of classrooms. Okay. Yeah, so I've kind of grown up with it, and I really, like, I'm, I guess it's not, it's odd to say, but I'm comfortable with, Mm -hmm. with people that have these, um, these syndromes, so, and no one, no one goes to their classrooms and talks to them, so, um, I do, and they love it, like, little kids that just, everyone loves space, like, it's cool, (laughs) right, yeah, yeah, so, um, I've had the, the privilege to go and do that in, in a number of classrooms um, in like greater kind of Southern California area. Um, but I also go into classrooms that are um, have a lot of underrepresented minorities in STEM fields and just kind of try to inspire people. But I, I think in part of the reason like you, you have this, this podcast or this series is because kids just need to know that it's possible and that it's a job and that there are people like them doing it. So if I can be one of those people that's like, Hey, look over here. <laughs> like how fun this is. Come join me. Um, yeah. That's what I, I try to do to inspire mm-hmm. other people. And you're right to put people out there that are typically underrepresented in STEM fields to show people, you know, someone might come from the same background as you and not have any idea that, oh my gosh, there's someone just like me. Mm-hmm. Or if they're from the same town you grew up in or something and yeah. think that STEM or, or anything like that isn't an option. And I think just seeing someone that they can say, look, she did it and I can do it too. Mm-hmm. I think that's really important, um, you know, to kind of, promote and communicate to people about STEM. And uh, you said earlier about um, some of your colleagues or professors uh, that they work on the science stuff all the time, but then they're also working on communicating. I think that's so important in what I have found just in my research, um, that communicating what they're researching what they're working on and the implications or how it relates to something in everyday life is really important to garner more interest because Mm -hmm. um, you explaining what you're working on. Now I can kind of imagine it and think, okay, I kind of get that. That makes me more interested. And I think if people doing research, what have you, are really out there, be it social media or with this, um, <clears throat> and just kind of putting it in basic terms, I really hope that people will become more interested or think like, oh, I understand what she's talking about. Maybe I should look into this more, you know? So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, that's what we're really trying to promote is <clears throat> people who are traditionally underrepresented in STEM um, to have those visuals, those role models that they can look at and say, wow, they accomplished all this. There's nothing to keep me from doing it. Yeah. So we That's really great. appreciate that. And that I know that you're really aware of that too. So 
Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, what would like a presentation be like, or what do you kind of get them interested in and in learning about? Yeah, so I kind of focus on the solar system actually. Um, it's easy. It's very relatable. So normally, my I'll, I'll show like a PowerPoint presentation and just kind of pretty pictures of like walking through the solar system from the sun all the way out. I include Pluto, the dwarf oh. planet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but you know, walking all the way out to to like Pluto and the Kuiper Belt, um, and just talking about the things that are going on. So like showing them um the curiosity mars curiosity rover and like they may i think nasa did a really good job with kind of making curiosity personable like mm-hmm. giving, giving curiosity this personality um that every kid's loves everyone loves it the, the teachers love it the aides love it <laughs> um so yeah we kind of walk through the solar system and then usually i do a small hands-on um activity with them so one that's really simple is to make uh like a comet on a stick just out of like tin foil and tissue paper and ribbon and and so we we make it and i talk about um kind of the different parts of like the the rock and the coma and the tail um but then they have like a little toy to like wave around me for a couple minutes so That's really fun. So we already talked about your community involvement going into the schools uh, and classrooms. Um, Do you see yourself doing more of that or as well as time allows, I suppose? Yeah, um, I I really am very thankful that. So last year I was awarded the NSF, the National Science Foundation, um, the Graduate Research Fellowship. So for five years, I'm funded by the NSF, um, and a big part of that funding is to do outreach. Like, research is one component, and outreach to the NSF is just as important. So um, throughout, uh, definitely throughout my career, for certain throughout my graduate uh, school career, I'll be doing outreach similar to that. Um, I'm also the... uh, what's the I'm trying to think of the official title (laughs) I'm trying to remember Uh, for the um astronomical society of the pacific I am the junior board fellow oh my yeah yeah (laughs) so (laughs) right (laughs) um it's it's a position it's a very new position I'm actually the first one um Congratulations. Thank you. Um, And part of the reason I was brought on is because of the diversity and outreach work that I do and that I'm interested in doing. So working with them, we're um, working on a few different like products because going into classrooms is essential. I really love it. Um, There is some research into like how maybe how effective it is you know if I see if I meet someone in person for five minutes that's great but if I can give them a product that they can use whenever they want kind of like social media like if if there are people that can follow me on social media and see me whenever they need that inspiration that's maybe more effective than me going into a classroom and like talking at them when they you know have all other kinds of things on their mind you know um so, so while I will continue doing classroom visits, um, I'm kind of starting to think now about doing products that something similar to this, where anyone can come at any time mm-hmm. and, and watch a video, watch this. Um, so I'm starting to think that way with these different groups and um, doing similar stuff at UCI as well. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope that works out because that sounds like you said, being able to have something that someone can visit anytime, look up anytime on, on their schedule. I think you're right that you would reach a lot more people that way. Yeah. Uh, when it's on their time. <laughs> on their schedule. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's like you said, that's what we're hoping to do with this. Um, yeah. It's so great. Be out there for anyone to, pull up on YouTube or have on the podcast, you know, to listen to or or check out whenever Mm -hmm. they want to. We help run the Keck telescopes in Hawaii, 
which are some of the biggest in the world. So the, the astronomy in the UC system is very, very good and very like, we're very astro heavy in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, so this bridge program takes underrepresented minorities and, and helps them like bridge that gap between grad undergrad and grad school, especially for people who don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Calbridge is kind of built off of so the American Physical Society, which is the physics kind of big group in America, um, they have a bridge program that'll take from masters uh they help you through a master's program. So they'll take undergraduates, put them through a master's and then help bridge them into PhD programs. I think we'll start seeing more things like that in the future, um, more promotion uh, for underrepresented people to get into STEM fields. Um, do, you, do you see that happening at all or maybe not so much yet? Um, I think it's, yeah, I think it's starting to build. So I think they're all, they are all fairly new, um, but at least on the kind of receiving end of the program, it's been incredibly helpful. Like I can't sing its praise enough in a way. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that, that these programs will continue to grow. Did you really run into any adversity or any difficulties getting to the point you're at now? Um, you know, anyone telling you why are you doing this or you should be doing something else? Yeah, um, I did. I don't know if I ran into any more than, at least from, like, the professor level. Um, I definitely had professors that were, like, make sure that this is what you want to do. Like, grad school's really hard, you know, are you going to be able to get through grad school? Um, and also, I mean, which I, which I still hear, um, that you should have a plan B because no one becomes a professor, which a professor is always telling you this. And you're like, well, you yeah, I heard that a few times. <laughs> yeah. You became a professor. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and I do, you know, now that I'm in grad school and I'm seeing people graduate and try to go into it, it is very competitive. Um, but I think anything is very competitive, you know, like it, most things that are, really, really rewarding are very challenging. And, and I see it more as like this kind of old school mindset of like, it's hard, don't even try. Um, as opposed to kind of what's being talked about more now, which is like, if you want to do it, try it, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Yeah. and, And especially with something like grad school, like even if I don't become a professor, I'll still have a doctorate of astrophysics. (laughs) Like, like that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, I'll be okay. <laughs> Do you find people saying, because I know I got this when I was in grad school, um, well, you know, you can only be a teacher with that, or you can only be a professor with that degree, or what are you planning on doing with it, you know, when you finish? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah, all the time, like, what, do you, what are you going to do? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, look. <laughs> Yes, yes, I do hear it. And and the, I also hear it doing like outreach and kind of focusing on diversity. I will hear like, oh, but that means you're not doing as much research. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, all the, I mean, not all the time, but, but I think with some of these like negative things that happen, they just are like lodged in your brain. So you feel like they're maybe happen more often than they do. At least that's what I've noticed because I've really had to tell myself, like, this is the path that I want to take, and I'm just going to keep taking it until I'm, like, homeless or something, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Maybe not that extreme, but, right. you know. yeah, do you, yeah. Do you find yourself second-guessing yourself at times, like, when people do make those comments? Do you think, oh, gosh, what am I going to do with my life, or... You know, or do you feel really strongly about the path you've taken and where you see yourself going? Yeah, I'm kind of, so, more of the second, but I think I I only am so, like, like tunnel vision, strong-headed about it because I spent so long second-guessing myself and, like, mm-hmm. worrying and, um, 
I'm, I am a very typical overthinker. <laughs> so anytime someone has any comment, I like stress out and, you know, and I like analyze every little bit of the conversation. Um, but I did, I spent a long time, especially when I was like applying to grad schools because again, no one in my family had ever done it. Um, I was older. I didn't have an amazing GPA and actually, so I, um, finished my bachelor's at Cal State Long Beach. I applied to 12 graduate schools and got into zero of them the first time. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I, Luckily, the application deadline for master's programs is usually a couple months after the doctorate programs. So I got into the master's program at Cal State Long Beach, and I just like nose to the grindstone and didn't lift my head out of the textbooks for an entire year so that I could raise my GPA and have a lot of you know research under my belt. Um, and I reapplied early for graduate programs and got into three, like my top three choices. Wow. Yeah. Perseverance. Yes. Yeah. And your determination. Wow. Yeah. So kind of through that, I was like, okay, if I can do it, if I can make it through that, like, I don't care what anyone says. I'm just going to like steamroll, steamroll my way through this. Yeah. Wow. No. <laughs> What would you say or, or what kind of advice would you give to someone um, or even your younger self when you were really confused about what you wanted to do, thought you had this idea of, I love space, <laughs> um, <laughs> but not really sure where you wanted to take that? What, what kind of advice would you give to someone um, that is like you were interested in a, in a STEM field, but not really sure where to go with it. Right. Um, I think the biggest piece of advice would be to just kind of be fearless with it. Like if you're interested in it, go be like physically be interested in it. Like, you know, especially with all of social media and all of the internet now, um, look it up, like investigate it. Even if it's this little tiniest bit of, of intrigue, um, and, and go to school for it. So many people, I don't think you have to, I think there is still a stigma of if you go to school, you know, and get an English degree, you have to be a writer, you know, or, or a teacher or, yeah, yeah. 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 If you, if you go to school and get a physics degree, you have to be a physicist or you failed at life. Like that's not true, <laughs> you know? And I mean, and, and for me, for example, like I, I did acting for five years. Like that's not a, a throwaway thing. Um, and now I'm an astronomer, uh, <laughs> which again, it's like these opposite things, but, I kind of use the the tools that I learned, like the communication tools that I learned in theater every day. And, you know, obviously in things like this, like talking and communicating science, but also just in talking to scientists, like we are kind of stereotypically not great people persons, you know? So having, having these kind of skills that I learned in theater really helped me um, in just, in even, even in doing research. So, so it's, uh, my advice is that if it's something you're interested in, just go for it because you can always, you can, you can get to the end of the road or to the, to a point where you're like, well, I, maybe this isn't what I thought it was and just go a different direction. Like it's okay. You know, mm -hmm. and there, there, there is, I think a lot of people worry about, funding and, and jobs afterwards and this kind of stuff. And especially in the STEM fields, um, there's money. Like there is even in astrophysics. So in some STEM fields, like condensed matter, where they're like a lot of people who work in condensed matter um, work on batteries. So obviously <laughs> there's a lot of money <laughs> to make better batteries. Right. Um, yeah. And, and there's not a lot of money to uh, make, Gal understand galaxies like it's cool right yeah like it's really yeah, awesome. really cool yeah yeah and 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 I think it does affect the day to day you know in in maybe it's in not as a ta not as tangible as like a battery um, but there's still funding and 
you will also hear, hear that like NASA is not funded enough, which they're not. But, um, you know, there's, there's, there's still enough money there. If you, like, kind of like if there's a will, you can find the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you for putting it that way. Um, how can people reach out to you on social media? What, what would you recommend or how would you recommend they contact you? Are you, are you more active on Twitter, um, Instagram? Facebook, what would you say? Yeah, um, so I think I'm most active on Instagram and Facebook. Twitter, I mean, I check all three every day. I won't, I won't kid. <laughs> I'm all three. Um, but I, I use Instagram and Facebook the most. So I have a Facebook page called Astronomous. Um, yeah, yeah. And I can I, spell I saw that because your uh, Twitter handle as well, I think. Yes. <laughs> yes, I have, I am <laughs> across all platforms, not Snapchat, but across Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, I am Astronomouse. Um, on Twitter, there's an underscore at the end, because uh. someone took the name. I know, I know. I was <laughs> Well, we'll make sure to include those uh, below the video, too, so people can reach out to you. Yeah, um, yeah. I... I think this was fantastic. I've learned so much about you and what you do. Um, do you want to leave us with anything or um, have any closing remarks for us? Um, I guess any of my closing remarks would be just, it, you know, if for the audience that's watching, if you're interested in STEM, like, go for it. And there's, and really to take advantage of the social media thing. So, um, I, I use Twitter kind of professionally more. Um, so I like t try to talk more science and talk to other astronomers. Um, Instagram, I, I get so much inspiration from, um, women in STEM on Instagram, just kind of showing what the day to day is, you know, like, um, and, and seeing that. So for me, like with Instagram, I see other women like taking a break and I'm like, Oh, it is okay. <laughs> right? That is a good thing to do. Okay. Okay. You know, I can do that. Um, and on, on Facebook, I share a lot of like, like science communication kind of stuff. Um, but in each place I get a lot of inspiration and motivation because you can build these international communities really of other underrepresented people in STEM. So I would say, don't be scared to reach out and, and, you know, definitely reach out to me, but any, any scientist you see um, on social media that's into like any kind of science communication, they're going to be really helpful. Oh, good. That's great to hear. Cause I'm sure some people would be apprehensive about just, you know, blindly reaching out, to <laughs> someone and like you said just do it you know just yeah. try you what's the worst that could happen and mm -hmm. asking questions is great it's a great way yeah. to learn. yes um, it is and there's no dumb questions there's really not right. yeah and I think too like we, we we were talking about this a little bit when you were saying like oh I got that like about the yeah uh, galaxy evolution um I can't remember the quote specifically, but there's this kind of like theme that scientists should believe in if they don't, <laughs> but it's that if you can't explain something in the simplest terms, then you don't understand it. So if, if, yeah, so if, if you ask a question and you don't understand the answer, it's not necessarily your fault. It may be the person answering who doesn't really understand the material as well as they could. Right, to be able to break it down for someone to understand. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Well, I like that a lot. I'll keep that in mind. Awesome, good. <laughs> well, Katie, thank you so much. It's been fabulous talking to you, and we'll make sure to include your, your social media uh, information awesome. so people can reach out to you. Yay. And thanks again for a lovely interview. Yeah, thank you for having me. You're welcome. <laughs>